This is your moment. This, this is your honestly. Like, like uh, honestly, dude, I'm just so happy I got that win. I wanted that shit so bad, dude. I gave a lot for this fight, man. I gave everything for this. Like, we went up to Big Bear. We trained away from my family for a while. Like, I fucking, I went, to, I did not miss a practice. I killed myself day in, day out. I show, I ate all the clean meals that I was supposed to eat. I ate extra, even though I didn't like the way they tasted. I kept eating, like. Oh my god, like I shove, I like I, I'm going up in weight right now, so I'm like having to eat more than I'm used to. I think my stomach kind of shrunk from all the years of trying to make 25, and I'm like now I'm like forcing myself to eat. And like, I it's weird as it sounds, and Alex Perez is probably gonna be pissed at me, but I don't like it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, man, it's just it's oh, dude, I did everything I could for this, like, I did everything right. I trained my ass off, man, but we grinded this out for like. From, like, the first, like, like 12 to, like, four weeks out, it was a grind, dude. Just wrestling hard, fucking rough practices in the heat of California summer. Like, oh, my God. And just to have that play out the way it did, like, I'm just so happy to get that win, man. I'm so happy to have got that. Like, call it, dude. I was going to keep hitting him, too, man. Was, was knockout how you predicted the fight to go? Because that's your first knockout win in the UFC since, like, 2014. Uh, with Machula, I think, was your last knockout win. Yeah, um, that's my first knockout win with my hands, I think. Yeah. Um, like, that felt amazing. Russell Doan used to tell me there's no better feeling, and that fucker is right. <laughs> but, um, like, oh, man. Uh, that was that that scenario, the double the double straight to the hook um, was something that I've been landing all camp. I've been hitting that. There's, like, kind of, like, layers to it. We also had the body shot that we had that we're banking on we had the leg kick i never really got to use the leg kicks too much it ended up being more body but um like it that was one of the things that we had planned out um i was throwing the double the double straight almost like a double jab like just kind of flicking it out there and it's a really like unique thing to see like a lot of guys you're not really going to see that too much and it kind of like people will look at it and they'll just freeze for a second and in that like split second of them being frozen i can close the distance with the left hook and it just, it had been working all camp and it landed tonight and I'm so happy it did. It sounds like uh, this has been uh, like a hard camp. You fought a lot in the last year and a half, like six times. That's, that's a lot. Is this the sort of pace that you want to keep up? Does it benefit you at all? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, I only have, I think I'm, I'm technically just entering my athletic prime. It's traditionally from 27 to 32. Um, and so I want to make the most of it. You know what I mean? You only get one, right? So I might as well try to make the most of it and take it as far as I can, you know. Um, part of the pace was just I had to, I wanted to get back in the UFC, you know. Um, it's hard making a living at this sport, being a full-time fighter and not being in a major organization, especially the UFC. They make it the easiest, but, you know, like, without being in the UFC, it's just hard to pursue my dreams. It's hard to give my all to this sport. And so we needed to get me back in. I grinded it out, had like three, four fights. I think I had five fights in under a year. Um, and so this is just my sixth one in like a year and a half. And, you know, like I have no complaints. I'm happy about keeping that pace as long as I'm able to. You know what I mean? I like it. I'm in shape and I'm having fun. So you mentioned you, uh, you know, how good the knockout felt. Is there a risk of, you know, trying to chase that high going forward? And maybe, obviously, I'm sure you feel your grappling is still your bread and butter. I've heard this before. Um, I'm going to take it fight by fight. Um, certain fights, we might see something. We might want to chase the knockout this fight. We think we can get him. The dude might be chinny. He might have short arms. Some, there, there might be certain variables where, like, where, where we believe we can get the knockout. And there might be certain times where it's like, maybe we should take this dude to the ground. Like, if I'm fighting a dude from Asia, we're probably taking that guy to the ground. You know what I mean? Like... I'm going to try to stay level-headed, but, you know, I'm just so grateful I finally got to experience that high of putting someone down with your fists. You mentioned the weight cut uh, post-fight, fans weight obviously uh, feeling much better. How bad were they? Was there a moment where it all kind of clicked and you said, I just can't do this anymore? Um, yeah, so my last fight for CXF, um, it's LXF now. Uh, they have a fight next week. Um, plug that out there. All my boys are fighting on that. Um, I'll be out there too. Uh, so... For that fight, we had to make 125 on the dot because it was a title fight. And um, I had to do maybe like, I was cutting from like, I think I started the water cut from around 38. So I did around 12 or 13 in water. And I got down to the last, like, I think it was like the last 1.2 pounds. And I my body wasn't sweating anymore. And like all that was coming out was like little droplets from my wrist. And it took like 90 minutes to get like a pound, like 1.2 pounds out. Like, it was horrible. And after that, coach was like, I'm proud of you, but, <laughs> like, 
you know, may, maybe not again, you know. Um, and it was just, it, it's, it's my understanding or the way it looks to me is like there's shorter guys who weigh more than me at 125. Like Alex Perez or like Joe Benavidez or like there's like a lot of guys that weigh more than me but are shorter than me. But I feel like these dudes are cutting into f- to fat and muscle. Whereas taller dudes like me, taller, lengthier guys, I feel like we're cutting into like our bone and organ to do those drastic cuts. Um, and there's just, there's only so much you can take and I don't know if I can do it anymore. It's obviously healthier, but uh, was, uh, was it a hard decision to make to not keep going down to flyweight just because there's only about 16 fighters in the UFC flyweight division? It seems like there's so much opportunity there. There is, you know. Um, it's something I wrestle with, but it's just, like, I've tried to just focus on, um, I'm back in at Bantamweight. I want to make the most of my run at Bantamweight. Um, like, dude, when I cut down to 25, I'm almost like, why am I even doing strength and conditioning? I don't even have muscle down here. Like, what? how much am I going to be able to gain back in just drinking water in 24 hours you know like i feel like there's almost no point in the strength and conditioning at that weight you know and like i want to try to be the best athlete and the best martial artist i can be i feel like right now it's better suited at 35. that was your two and one now in your second round of ufc did you get the sense that if you had gone one and two that they might have uh, you know touched you again oh yeah yeah um i feel like i'm fighting for my job every time you know i got complacent with it um that might have been like harder to do with the drinking like that first time around um, I had such a stellar run that first time. I think I might have got a little complacent. And I was like, man, this job will always be here for me and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I kind of disrespected it, you know. And it's my own fault. I shouldn't have been doing that. But, you know, alcohol gets the better of, all, of everyone, you know. It just it happens. And, um, like, now I'm just – I'm trying to make the best run that I can and not worry – like, I feel like I'm fighting for my job every time. But if I focus on having the best run possible, I think it will be okay. What, what's the best advice that you've been given, sort of, uh, given, the, given the highs and lows that your career's gone through, like, to, and also, you know, the personal things with the, uh, with the drinking and all that? Uh, what's the best advice you've been given? What can you kind of pass along to other guys in your, you know, situation? Um, if you're having problems with the drinking, just stop. Like, honestly, one of the things that helped me was relocating. Like, going back home where I was, I, I was, like, in the same routine, I would go to the practice, I would come home, I would go to the, li- the liquor store across the street, I would get whatever was on sale, I'd go back home. And, like, it was, like, a weird routine. And when I went back home for a little bit, I'd see that liquor store, and it would kind of, like, trigger something in me that, like, I wanted to go back in there, and I wanted to go, like, and drink. And it was, like, it was part of the routine, you know, and it kind of, like, triggered a memory in me or something. And I-, I would say to, like, try to get away from things like that, try to get out, like, break out of your normal routine, you know. That's what's kind of holding you there. Um... That would be honestly one of the biggest things that I would say. You have a lot of people reaching out to you, you know, about um, their own addictions. Yeah, there there are people like telling me that they like they're proud of me because you know they've um they've been able to like overcome things or like like I'm like a motivator for them or like I'm inspiring them, and I just. I'm happy that I could do something good for somebody else. You know what I mean? Like all all the work that like all my coaches have put into me to this point, all the work that everybody's put in, the UFC's put in, all you guys have put in. Like I'm just happy I'm able to give something back to somebody. You know? How much is, of this one is for Jason House? I know he's done a lot, but you lived with him when you first moved out and everything. I know you guys have really oh worked my, hard together. Yo, dude, I thought that guy was gonna cry after man. I was like, I was so happy I was able to get in this win. He fought so hard for me to get back in, mm-hmm. and. I know he put a lot of his own like personal like credibility I guess on the line to get me back in and to like vouch for me and just to be able to repay him like that like it meant a lot to me man. it meant a lot. What do you think of fighting in Vancouver? Oh, I love it, dude. Vancouver's awesome, bro. I'm going to Tojo's after this. <laughs> Sushi. <laughs> What's ideal for you next after this? Um I'd like to fight again before the end of the year. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I was solely focused on this fight. Like, I wasn't really... Like, I haven't looked at, like, anything else. I don't know what else is coming up. I don't know where the cards are. Like, I was solely focused on, like, winning against Ryan McDonald. That's all that I wanted. And um, I'm going to have to look at everything and, like, assess when I can fight again. But I'd like to fight again before the end of the year. I don't know if you saw Matt Schnell give you a nice compliment after the win tonight. He gave you a nice shout-out. I have not seen that. But thank you, Matt. pretty nice, yeah. Thank you, Matt. (laughs) 